Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at an Exquisite Blood combo deck. This was added in Jumpstart, a 5 man enchantment saying whenever an opponent loses life we gain that much life and Exquisite Blood forms a 2 card combo with Veto from M21, 3 mana 1 3 legendary creature saying whenever we gain life target opponent loses that much life. So if we have both Veto and Exquisite Blood in play at the same time, we can form an infinite damage combo if we either gain life or the opponent loses life. So let's imagine our opponent takes a bit of damage and loses life, that will trigger Exquisite Blood, gaining us that much life, which in turn will trigger Veto, which then turns that life gain into damage, which in turn will trigger the Exquisite Blood again, and that will keep going back and forth until the opponent is dead. And if we gain life first instead, that will trigger Veto of course, which in turn will trigger Exquisite Blood, and the combo will work that way too. So this is the two card combo, pretty straightforward, and we're playing it in a chromatic black shell, some of you may be familiar with that. It allows us to play Mastermind's Acquisition as a powerful tutor card to search up any card in the main deck or sideboard, which is why we have the sideboard pulled up here, which we'll go over in just a second. And then we're also playing the package of Chromatic Lantern plus Golos, so we get to activate Golos, and Golos can search up Cabal Strongholds, which works nicely with all our swamps, generating extra mana, and with all that extra mana it becomes much easier to activate Golos or to use our Mastermind's Acquisition and play a powerful card in the same turn. So that's the basic idea of our deck, so let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our two drops where we've got two copies of Eliminate as a cheap spot removal spell destroying a creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost 3 or less, we can easily swap it out with Heartless Act or Cast Down, we've got one Cast Down in the sideboard that we can also search up. And then we're playing the full playset of Maze Mind Tome, which replaced Treasure Map in the deck. Maze Mind Tome just a bit more mana efficient to get value out of right away. We don't need to pay any mana to scry one, which can help us look for the different combo pieces, and pay two mana to draw a card right away. And then if we use the tome for the fourth time, we exile it and gain four life. And one thing I like to do in this deck is to keep Maze Mind Tome on three counters for as long as possible. That way if we do assemble Veto plus Exquisite Blood, sometimes we don't have a way to make the opponent lose life right away, but instead we can simply scry with the Maze Mind Tome for free, gain for life, and that will kickstart the combo by uh, activating Veto, which in turn will activate Exquisite Blood. Then we've got the full playset of Mindstone to give us some additional ramp, and we can simply sacrifice it to draw a card if we have enough mana. Then at 3 we've got our two copies of Veto, which does have a bit of synergy in the deck outside of the combo, so that's still a valuable card to play and uh, activate the 5 mana ability to give our creatures lifelink. Can activate the lifelink ability before playing a swamp, that way Dread Presence will uh, gain us 4 life instead of just 2, so that will trigger Veto an additional time. Then we've got two copies of Cry of the Carnarium as a cheap sweeper effect, giving all creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn. Doesn't kill any of our own creatures, but also great at exiling any recursive threats that come back from the graveyard. And then two copies of Murder Rider as more all-purpose removal, destroying a creature or planeswalker at the cost of two life, and then gives us a 2-3 lifelink creature afterwards, which can also potentially combo with Veto. And then we've got a full playset of Chromatic Lantern, which can make one man of any color, and also turns our lands into multicolor lands, that way we can use the activated ability on Golos if we draw them. And then Chromatic Lantern and Mindstone also set up our Dread Presence nicely, because the problem with Dread Presence is that you don't really want to play it on turn 4 if you don't have any additional ramp, because then the opponent can kill it without you getting any value, but if you can ramp into it with Mindstone or Chromatic Lantern, you can play the Dread Presence and play Swamp in the same turn, getting value from your Dread Presence right away, maybe drawing a card at the cost of 1 life, or dealing 2 damage and gaining 2 life to any targets. And then we've got two copies of Extinction Event as our main deck Sweeper of Choice, choosing Odd or Even and then exiling each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. And then we've got more Sweepers in the sideboard, Languish and Ritual of Soot that we can search up with our Mastermind's Acquisition in case they line up better. But it's nice to have access to all three Sweepers so that we can choose the right one for a given situation if we can search it up with the Acquisition. But again, that's also a card you can easily swap out with the other Sweepers if the mana game calls for it. And then our full playset of Mastermind's Acquisition, which is the centerpiece of the deck, allowing us to grab a powerful win condition out of the sideboard, or helping us assemble the combo. And then at 5 we've got our two copies of Exquisite Blood. Our deck is not the best at leveraging Exquisite Blood outside of the combo. If you play this in a more creature-heavy deck, then you might get more value out of your Exquisite Blood and Veto combo. 
but uh, here it's mostly just a five man enchantment to set up our two card combo and enchantments are pretty tricky for the opponent to remove so it's usually going to stay in play long enough for us to eventually find a veto and then assemble the combo and finally we've got three copies of Golos Tireless Pilgrim which for once is not going to search up Field of the Dead instead going to search for Cabal Stronghold most of the time and that's a land that can produce more mana based on how many swamps we have in play so that's also the reason why we're not playing any copies of Castle Lochthwain which is not actually a swamp and playing more swamps also benefits our Dread Presence so Cabal Stronghold will generate additional mana as soon as we have five or more swamps in play which is quite valuable in a mana intensive deck playing Mastermind's Acquisition and of course we can also use the activated ability on Golos if we have a Chromatic Lantern in play, letting us exile the top 3 cards of our library, and we can play those cards without paying their mana cost this turn. And then we've got 22 Swamps to complement our 3 Cabal Strongholds. Then going over the sideboard, which we can access with our Mastermind's Acquisition, we've got one copy of Cling to Dust, which can function as Graveyard Hate, but it can also enable the Exquisite Blood plus Veto combo if we don't have another way of gaining a life or dealing damage by exiling a creature and gaining 3 life. Then we've got one copy of Duress, as cheap discard we can get against a combo or control deck. Graph Digger's Cage, as more Graveyard Hate, can also shut down cards like Bolas' Citadel or Experimental Frenzy. One copy of Cast Down, as more cheap spot removal to complement or eliminates in the main deck. Source of Spyglass can shut down activated abilities, mostly Planeswalkers. One copy of Necromancia to shut down combo decks. Virulent Plague can be great against the Field of the Dead decks, killing all tokens. Josu can also be a nice finisher if we have a lot of mana to work with. We can pay the kicker cost and then make 8 to 2 black zombie knight creature tokens with menace. We've got a languish and a ritual of soot to complement our extinction event in the main deck. And then a Phyrexian obliterator can also be nice, especially against red decks. And massacre girl can also function as a sweeper if uh, the board calls for it. And a thought distortion can also be nice against combo and control decks potentially exiling the opponent's hand. They might let the Mastermind's Acquisition resolve, thinking they can just counter whatever we search up, but of course Thought Distortion is uncounterable. And then we've got two additional finishers with Ugin and Ulamog in case the combo doesn't work out. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a pretty nice hand. We've got Mindstone for Ramp, Veto one combo piece and acquisition can get the other one. Facing the tempered steel deck. So eliminate for steel overseer is going to be pretty important. Might have to search up a sweeper instead of the combo piece and then try and take over the late game. Alright, so lots of 1-drops. I would not say no to a Crime of Carnarium. Or an Extinction Event. All that glitters, so that's gonna be our Eliminate target. So yeah, I could Acquisition for Extinction Event here. Play Stronghold to keep Swamp for potential Dread Presence. Although if I don't kill the Brute, there is a chance I die to another All That Glitters, which is probably not a risk I'm willing to take. So we'll just play another Mindstone and pass with Eliminate available. Opponent just going all in here. Alright, maybe they have a protection spell. They do not. That does buy us quite a bit of time. So, acquisition for exquisite blood. Now if they play the card Tempered Steel, I might regret not getting a uh, Extinction Event. Another Eliminate. So I can play Exquisite Bloods. 
have eliminate up. And then if I can draw a way to deal damage to my opponents, we could kill them next turn, but more likely I'm gonna acquisition for cling to dusts to enable it. So don't really need to kill anything. I'll still eliminate the Voltaic Servant here, because I'm not going to be spending that mana otherwise. So yeah, I can play Veto, and we have the two-card combo. Problem is, I need to gain life, or the opponent needs to lose life. So a Stronghold makes 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I think that does it with the Cling to Dust. Just need to make sure to actually keep black mana floating. I guess we even had one additional mana here. Where's my cling to dust? There it is. I exile a creature. All right, sweet. So we took a bit of a risky line to try and assemble the combo instead of just getting a sweeper, which maybe would have worked out even better. But uh, yeah, got to see the combo in action. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Nice mix of interaction and uh, dread presence, a nice card advantage engine. Probably gonna play the stronghold next, so we keep swamps in hand for dread presence. Facing some sort of Abzan deck, four color deck, Explorer. All right, so this is Field of the Dead. So we do have the cry to deal with the wave of zombies. But then we're mainly going to try and assemble the combo. Since Field doesn't apply all that much pressure early on, so we do have time to maybe Assemble it. So we'll go Dread Presence into Swamp Draw card. Finding a Golos would be nice with Lantern in play already. They could be ramping into something different, I guess, but... When we see a bunch of different lands in play, it's easy to assume Feel of the Dead. Juvenator. And there's a field. Alright, acquisition. Now I could also get the enchantment giving all tokens minus two, minus two. Or I could get the Necromancia to get rid of the remaining Field of the Deads in their deck. But they still have the one in play. So there's a few ways we could play this. I think I'm just gonna chill for now. Draw some cards. And uh, then we can maybe look into assembling the combo, so I'm hoping to draw into Vito or Exquisite Blood along the way. Just another Swamp. Do I want to Murder Side or anything? Probably want to keep this for an opposing Golos. Don't think Eliminate is gonna do much in this matchup. I guess it could maybe kill an Uro at some points, but that's fine. They could also just play an Ugin here, which is going to be tough to beat. Although I guess we can just murder Strider with the Planeswalker as well. Second Field of the Dead. So if I name even, it does get rid of the tokens, but also the Dread Presence, so... It's not all that great. Just keep playing Swamps. I mean, we're also getting to the point where I can get my own Ugin or Ulamog to maybe end the game. They have access to quite a bit of mana. 7, 8. 
So yeah, if I acquisition for an Ulamog, I can probably cast it next turn and exile two Field of the Deads. So maybe we'll do that instead. And then probably not do anything else. Maybe I should cry the Carnarium. Yeah, I guess I could see them going wide and killing me even through an Ulamog if I just take a bunch of damage next turn. There's Golos. Does get another field, so those are starting to add up. But I do still have an Extinction event to potentially wipe the board. Alright, so I think it's Ulamog time. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Have to get rid of Golos, otherwise they can activate it. And then the plan is just to win by attacking with Ulamog twice. Probably don't want Extinction Event anymore since that also gets rid of Ulamog if we name even. Don't think they'll be bouncing Ulamog. Opponent just pluses. Suppose they could have escape shifts to make a whole bunch of zombies at instant speed now with the fairy. But if I attack with Ulamog, they'll be forced to escape shift first, otherwise they might not have enough lands to search up with the escape shift. Although I guess maybe not. But then I could still extinction event afterwards, getting rid of all the zombies. Killing the fairy doesn't do anything since they already plussed, so they can still cast sorceries at instant speed. So let's start by, I guess, drawing a card here. And then we'll attack. Just go face. Play Golos. Get another Swamp. And then I can also just activate Golos here. Found Veto and Acquisition, although I won't have the mana to do anything post acquisition. But this could get the Exquisite Blood, assuming Vito survives. Yeah, if they have the Escape Shift, I might just be dead, so it doesn't matter. If they don't have Escape Shift end of turn, I maybe should look at the Exiled cards here. Yeah, there's the two copies of Escape Shifts. But yeah, the hope is that they don't have enough lands left in their deck. They only have 17 cards remaining. Alright, so assuming we survive Escape Shift here, yeah, I guess we'll just get the Exquisite Blood. At least it'll make for a satisfying finish. Yep, and their escape shifts. Do they have enough lands left to kill me? Probably. Yep, that should be plenty. They definitely took a risk by waiting, but had they escape shifted first, then uh, I could have cast the extinction event to get rid of all the zombies. So in hindsight, getting the enchantment to give all zombies minus two minus two could have worked out better against their version. Most decks have given up on escape shifts. Typically don't see it in the Golos decks anymore. 
so I wasn't really expecting the zombies end of turn. But the way they played that last turn made it pretty obvious. GG's. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice opening hand. We've got both combo pieces and Tome to potentially gain the life to then kickstart the combo. Always make sure to put a stop on upkeep so we can scry with Tome before taking our draw. Opponent had the Lanner Elves, but sadly they had a double castle opener. That's pretty awkward. And yeah, I'll keep a swamp. Probably just play Veto here. Against a mono green deck, I don't expect it to die. Could potentially be awkward if we want an extinction event. But I can just Murder Strider any key creature they play, put it on the elf deck. Nice. Cry seems pretty good. I guess I should attack first. And then just cry towards land 5, and then transforming tomb is going to set up our combo kill. Dread Presence, I think I'm gonna say no to that. Alright, so we'll have to wait an additional turn, but then I'll be able to kill them by transforming Tome, so it doesn't even take an extra turn here. So if nothing bad happens to my permanents, they should be dead next turn. Yeah, the opponent did potentially get punished by that Arch of Araska, not letting them play the Elf on turn one. Alright, and there we go. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. This hand is pretty unexciting. If we draw Golos, it could be quite good since we have the Lantern already. Without Golos, this hand is just a bunch of ramp into nothing. I'll take a mulligan. This is better. And then... I'm tempted to bottom the Murder Strider, although it is the only interaction we have. But... Mindstone is kind of nice to maybe set up the combo. This might be a hand that just tries to go for the combo as soon as possible. We'll try it. And there's the acquisition, so... Yeah, maybe we can assemble it here. Although against the red deck, Vito tends to die pretty easily. Aha, it's a goblin deck. I think I Mindstone... Although, I do need to start putting counters on Tome as soon as possible to then uh, be able to gain the 4 life the turn we play Vito. Alright, double Tome's nice. Might have to search up a sweeper effect. Goblin Matron on top. Take three. Well, ideally we just draw a Sweeper here. Dread Presence isn't bad. That can also help me enable the combo without having to flip Tomb. And then 
I guess there's no real reason to scry other than... Yeah, maybe I'll need the life gain from Tome here, so I'll still scry. Take out Snoop. And we've got a blocker for all these 1-1 one -one tokens. Ooh, Muxus. I'll have to read this one. 6 mana for 4. Reveal top 6 cards of your library. Put all goblin creature cards with convert mana cost 5 or less onto the battlefield. And when he attacks, gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other goblin you control. Well, if they find a way to give Muxus haste, we are in trouble. Yeah, that's definitely a hasty Muxus. Thanks to the Chieftain. And that should just kill us here. That's more than enough. 13 13, so we have to jump there. I guess we're at one. So technically not dead yet. Although I can't imagine us getting out of this mess. Eliminates. It's not gonna do it. Bottom the lantern. Strongholds doesn't do all that much. Acquisition. Nope. We are definitely dead. Exquisite blood. So we did have both combo pieces, but just a little bit too much pressure. GG's. But even if we found Extinction Event here, then uh, the Chieftain and the Prospector still would have survived, so we still die on the following turn. Alright, well, got to see Mux as an action for the first time. Pretty impressive. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Could use an extra land or two to go with our Dread Presence and Acquisition, but I've got one combo piece. Acquisition can maybe get Exquisite Blood and a bit of interaction with Extinction Event. Facing Watery Grave. Played a Stronghold now, so we keep Swamp for Dread Presence. Are we gonna get Thought Erasured? Opponent on Esper. And a Search for Ascanta. Alright, up against Control. Don't really want to play Dread Presence. Could always Acquisition now, in case we don't get a chance to later. But I don't know quite what I want to get. So I'll just play the Tome. And then we can just draw a card with it. Could be a game where we get a Thought Distortion with the Acquisition. Alright, the factor playing Charter Course and Discovery means they might be a Reanimator deck instead. Which means that getting Graph Digger's Cage with Acquisition could be key. I did forget to put a stop on upkeep to scry with Maze Mind Tome here. But that's okay, we'll just go Lantern and then draw with Tome. And I want a main phase draw so we can potentially still hit our land drop. Alright, that's fine. Make sure to put the stop on upkeep now. And now we've got Lantern to go with Golos. So there's no creatures in Graveyard yet that I need to 
stop from being reanimated, but now that we see to Unbound Lich, it's pretty much confirmed this card's unburial rights. So I will be acquisitioning for a Gravedigger's Cage, most likely. Still wouldn't mind hitting my land drop. Well, I guess we could also just combo kill our opponent instead. So the Tome next turn is going to gain the life. So if I put Exquisite Blood in play next turn, I can go Veto, gain life and kill them. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen? Famous last words. Concocts. Alright, let's see what they can reanimate here. Agent of Treachery is not an option. Ulamog is fine. It doesn't exile anything. It's just a big dumb 10 10 indestructible. Alright, we had the option to get Cage, but we managed to combo kill our opponent instead. And yeah, we definitely see the value of Maze Mind Tome over Treasure Map, letting us gain the life to then enable the combo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing a Dragon Skull Summit, not sure what that means. Croxa. Probably don't have time for double acquisition, even though it does let me potentially get both combo pieces. Stitcher Supplier. Alright. So it's a Rakdos Sacrifice type deck. Eliminate can kill Croxa, and they're pretty close to escaping it. So I should probably keep it. This is kind of tough. I like all my cards. Maybe we can just acquisition for some graveyard hate and I can get rid of the Eliminate anyway. Sure. So yeah, they currently can't escape Croxa, unless they go Fabled Passage, grab a land, I guess. It's a castle instead. And call the Death Dweller to get back Young Pyromancer. So if I play Dread Presence, play Swamp to kill Pyromancer, they will have enough cards in Graveyard to escape Croxa which is not what we want to see. So maybe I just acquisition here and I could get a Gravedigger's Cage, which also stops Call of the Death Dweller. Could also get to Cling to Dust and just exile one Crocs at a time, but this seems better. And then I don't hate keeping the Swamp in hand, so next turn I can go Dread Presence, play Swamp to kill the Pyromancer. Can even play the Mind Stone first. And then what do we get with the second acquisition here? Well, apparently 
opponent concedes, so yeah, getting sideboard cards sometimes can be quite effective. Sweet, so yeah, we got to see a nice variety of matchups, and we got to assemble the combo in most of our victories, so mission accomplished. Of course, in some of those games we could have easily just grabbed a different win condition out of the sideboard instead and won that way, but uh, the goal was definitely to assemble the combo, so I'm happy that we were able to do it. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.